hello friends welcome back to dental exam guide and today i am going to discuss various mcqs related to our topic anatomic landmarks on tooth surface and all these questions are collected from previous question papers and the first question is during the development of tooth sound coalescence of the lobes resulting option a grooves b fissures c cusp d all of the above and the answer is option a groove because we know a developmental groove is a shallow groove or line between the primary parts of a crown or root or between the lobes and fissures are deep pits and grooves on the surface of a tooth that is uh, during the development of a tooth if the uh, fusion between the lobes is not proper it will result in the formation of fissures and fissures are more prone to caries second question is ridge that descend from cuspal tip towards the central part of the occlusal surface in maxillary molar is option a triangular ridge b marginal ridge c transverse ridge and d oblique ridge and the answer is option a triangular ridge because triangular ridge itself is defined as a ridge that descend from cuspal tip towards the central part of occlusal surface of posterior teeth the next question is the linear depression on a tooth surface is option a pit b groove c fossa and d sulcus and the answer is option b groove because we know pits are small pinpoint depressions then uh, fossa is a irregular depression and sulcus is a v-shaped depression or valley in the surface of tooth so the only one linear depression is groove fourth question is minimum number of lobes in permanent teeth is option a 2 b is 1 c 4 and d is 5 and the answer is option c 4 only with the exception of primary anterior teeth which develops from a single lobe all the other teeth permanent and primary requires minimum four lobes for their development and we know uh, lobes are represented by mammalones and cingulum in anterior teeth and cusps in posterior teeth permanent maxillary and mandibular first molars develops from five lobes primary maxillary and primary mandibular second molars which resembles permanent first molars also develops from five lobes and all the other molars both in primary and uh, permanent tendition they develops from four lobes and all the uh, permanent anteriors and premolars develop from four lobes except the ficus variant of premolar that is mandibular second premolars which develops from five lobes next question is which tooth has the most prominent lingual ridge with the mesial and distal fossae option a maxillary central incisor b mandibular lateral incisor c maxillary lateral incisor d mandibular canine and e maxillary canine and if you have seen previous two videos the answer is very simple and it is maxillary canine uh, both the maxillary and mandibular canines have characteristic labial and lingual ridges but those on the maxillary canine are more prominent the next question is which of the following premolars does not have a transverse ridge option a maxillary first premolar b maxillary second premolar c mandibular first premolar d mandibular second premolar two cusp type and e mandibular second premolar three cusp type transverse ridge is formed by the union of two triangular ridges uh, and they cross the occlusal surface transversely in a buccolingual direction in a two cusp premolars the triangular ridges of the buccal and lingual cusp they converge or they meet at the central group and they join together to form a transverse ridge but in case of three triangular ridges of three cusp mandibular second premolar uh, where there is one large buccal and two smaller lingual cusps 
resulting in a y-shaped occlusal group pattern the triangular ridges do not meet and thus there is no transverse ridge so the answer is option e mandibular second premolar three cusp type please do watch the previous two videos on anatomic landmarks on two surface then it will become very easy for you to answer these questions the next question is the cusp of carabelli is present on option a permanent maxillary first molar b permanent mandibular first molar c permanent maxillary second molars and d permanent mandibular second molar we have discussed everything regarding cusp of carabelli in our previous videos so the answer is option a permanent maxillary first molar the next question is number of line angles in permanent maxillary central incisor option a 2 b 4 c 6 and d 8 we have discussed in detail about the line angles and point angles in previous video and the number of line angles in anterior teeth is 6 and in posterior teeth is 8 next question is which of the following are supporting cusp option is disto buccal cusp of maxillary first molar lingual cusp of mandibular second premolar mesio option c is mesio lingual cusp of maxillary first molars and option d is disto lingual cusp of mandibular first molar supporting cusp are nothing but they are the working cusp or the functional cusp so in maxillary teeth it is the lingual cusp and in the mandibular teeth it is the buccal cusp and these cusps they functions by grinding against the opposing teeth and the tip of the supporting cusp usually rest in opposing marginal ridge areas with the exception of mesio palatal cusp of maxillary molars and the disto buccal cusp of the mandibular molars which rest in the opposing central fossa so all the maxillary palatal cusp and uh, mandibular buccal cusps are supporting cusp so the answer is option c mesio lingual or mesio palatal cusp of maxillary first molar next question is how many point angles are found on tooth number 1 2 option a 1 b 2 c 3 d 4 and e 5 so as per two digit tooth numbering system the tooth number 1 2 is maxillary right lateral incisor and the number of point angles in anterior teeth is 4 so the answer is option d 4 The next question is how many teeth in primary dentition normally have a cingulum? The options are A6, B8, C10, D12 and E14. All the anterior teeth both incisors and canines in both the permanent and primary dentition have a cingulum or bulge on the cervical third of their lingual surface. So four central incisors plus four lateral incisors plus 4 canine that is total 12 teeth have can singulum next question is a 25 year old patient presents with amelons on the incisors which of the following is the most likely explanation for this finding option a posterior cross bite b anterior cross bite c variation of normal the anterior open bite and e is nocturnal bruxism mammalones are small enamel tubercles on the incisal edges of anterior teeth and they don't have underlying dentin that's why uh, they normally wear away when the tooth comes into functional contact with the opposing tooth and they are uh, often translucent because of the lack of underlying dentin and their presence in adult is an indication of malocclusion in anterior open bite situation there is no contact between maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth the age of the patient suggests that if the teeth were in contact the mammalone would have been worn away so the answer is option d anterior open bite next question asks the cervical ridge is found on the facial surface of how many primary teeth option a 4 option b 8 c 12 d 16 and e 20 and we have already discussed different type of ridges 
and we know cervical ridge is a characteristic feature of all the primary teeth and it runs mesiodistally in the cervical third of uh, buccal or the facial surface of all primary teeth and in permanent dentition it is seen in the permanent molars and uh, cervical ridge is prominent in primary anterior teeth and is best seen when viewed from the proximal side so the answer is uh, 20 since cervical ridge is found on facial surface of all the primary teeth next question is how many transverse ridges exist on a maxillary molars option a is 0 option b is 1 c is 2 d is 3 and e is 4 and the correct answer is option b 1 each maxillary molar has one transverse ridge which runs between the mesiobuccal and mesiolingual cusps. Next question is a labial ridge can be found on which tooth type? Option A is incisor, B is canine, C premolars and D is molar. The canines are the only teeth with a distinct vertical labial ridge and uh, shallow developmental depressions like mesial and distal to the labial ridge which runs incisocervically near the center of the crown in the middle and incisal thirds and uh, labial ridge is quite prominent on maxillary canine premolars also have a similar looking ridge on the labial surface but it's called as buccal ridge not the labial ridge and no mola has a labial ridge so the answer is option b canine next question is on which primary tooth can one find an oblique ridge and occasionally a fifth cusp of carabelli the options are option a mandibular first molar option b mandibular second molar option c is maxillary first molar and option d is maxillary second molar Primary maxillary second molar is a tooth which most closely resembles the permanent maxillary first molar and uh, oblique ridge and occasionally a fifth cusp of carabelli is found on primary maxillary second molar. Next question is the oblique ridge on a maxillary molar extend between what two cusps? Option A is mesiobuccal and distobuccal, B is mesiobuccal and mesiolingual. C is distobuccal and distolingual and D is distobuccal and mesiolingual and the oblique ridge which is most prominent on the maxillary permanent first molar it extends between mesiolingual and distobuccal cusp the option D is the right answer and it separates the mesiobuccal and distolingual cusps next question is which of the following ridges is not located on the corresponding tooth type option a cervical ridge on all the molars option b labial ridge all the anterior teeth option c oblique ridge maxillary molars option d marginal ridge all teeth and option e buccal cusp ridge all premolars All the other options except the option B is correct because labial ridge is not seen on all the anterior teeth, it is seen only on canine. So the answer is option B. Next question is palato gingival groove is found in option A maxillary lateral incisor, B maxillary first premolar, C maxillary first molars and D all the above. And palato gingival groove is a characteristic feature found in the maxillary lateral incisor. So the answer is option A. Next question is total number of singular in each dentition. Option A6, B12, C24 and D32. And the answer is option B12 because all the anterior teeth in both the dentition has one singular each. So there are six anterior teeth in upper and six in the lower arch the total it makes 12. next one is the number of fruits in maxillary second molars option a is 2 b 3 c is 4 and d is 5 and the answer is option b 3 roots
Next question is an 8 year old child comes to clinic with a large front teeth having jagged margins. What is the treatment plan? Option A is smoothen the jagged margins and apply fluoride varnish. B is build up other teeth to large size. C is reduction of a big teeth and the D is assure him and send him back. Uh, maxillary center incisors erupts almost by the year of 7 to 8 years and it's normal to find the jagged margins or the mammalones at the incisal edge of those teeth and it's nothing abnormal so we just have to assure the patient and send them back so the answer is option d next question the crown of any tooth can be subdivided for description into option a halves option b thirds option c quarters and option d eighths and the answer is option B thirds because we know for the purpose of description the crown surface of any teeth is subdivided into thirds. And the last question is which of the following groups separate cusp ridges from marginal ridges? Option A is supplemental groups, option B is developmental groups, option C is mesial marginal developmental groups and option D is marginal ridge developmental group. And the answer is option B, developmental groups. And a few extra points about the grooves is palatal gingival groove is a characteristic feature of maxillary lateral incisor, mesial, mesiolingual developmental groove. It is seen on mandibular first premolars. Then mesial marginal developmental groove is characteristically found on maxillary first premolars few points uh, i forgot to mention in previous videos are the cusp of carabelli is located approximately 2 mm cervical to the cusp ridge of the mesiolingual cusp and uh, the lingual cusp of lower first premolar it is compared to the development of the cingulum of canine not with the development of lingual cusp of second premolars and fissures fissures are a narrow crevice at the deepest portion of developmental groove in the enamel and they result from improper union of developmental lobes and the caries is most likely to occur in pits fissures and grooves and the teeth least likely to be lost due to caries are mandibular incisors since they do not have any pits fissures and grooves on their surface the facial and lingual surface of all the teeth are trapezoidal in shape and if you look at the proximal surface of each tooth it is triangular for all the anterior teeth and it's trapezoidal in shape for all the maxillary posterior teeth and is rhomboidal for all the mandibular posterior teeth. Arch length of the maxilla is 128 mm and that of mandible is 126 millimeter that's all about today's video have a nice day